I wanted to be like Dominic Toretto, but my car wasn't fast enough. Many of you don't know, but I actually own a Ferrari, which you can see on this picture. No, not that Ferrari. I mean this Ferrari. You don't believe that's a Ferrari? Look, they even got the same logo on them. Unfortunately, my car had only one horsepower, so I had to upgrade it. Luckily, I'm a chemist which basically gives me godlike abilities. In this video, I will show you how I synthesized nitromethane and upgraded my car to become even better than Dominic Toretto. Ok, what's nitromethane? It's a very simple compound consisting of a metal group attached to a nitro group. Since the nitro group contains a lot of oxygen, nitromethane can burn very efficiently even when there is little oxygen present. It also releases a lot of energy and that's why it's used as a fuel additive for drag races. This way, when I'm done, I can just put it in my car's reservoir and get several times more horsepower. Even Toretto hasn't think of that. That's because he hasn't studied chemistry. Ok, so my plan to synthesize this chemical is to use chloracetic acid. I will replace the chlorine atom with a nitro group using sodium nitride. Then I will decarboxylate the resulting nitroacetic acid to nitromethane. Without further ado, let's get started. To start off, I measured out in a beaker 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. I also measured 59 grams of sodium nitride. To the sodium hydroxide, I added 100 milliliters of distilled water. The idea here is to make a solution containing 40% sodium hydroxide. To the sodium nitride, I added 80 ml of distilled water. Then both mixtures were stirred until everything dissolved. I placed 100 grams of chloroacetic acid in 1 liter 3 necked round bottom flask. To this, I added about 150 grams of crushed ice. The interesting thing here was that this mixture acted a lot like ice salt mixture. Even without mixing, its temperature dropped significantly below the freezing point of water, as you can see on the thermocouple reading. This is good because now we are going to do a neutralization which is very exothermic. To neutralize the acid, I added 75 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution I made earlier. The purpose of the ice in the mixture is to serve as a coolant and maintain a low temperature. If the temperature goes above 20 degrees Celsius, the hydroxide can potentially replace the chlorine atom and produce hydroxyacetic acid. That's why the base was added slowly, keeping an eye on the thermocouple reading. When most of it was added, I started to take out samples on every few milliliters I added to check the pH. Here you can see it was almost neutral. We needed basic, so I kept adding more hydroxide. The pH paper might even not have been needed because at one point the whole solution changed color. I instantly checked the pH value and it was basic. At this point all of the ice had melted, turning into water which will be the solvent for the reaction. Now it's time to add the other reagent which is sodium nitrite. Unlike the hydroxide, I can add it all at once because its addition isn't exothermic at all.
the flask was arranged for simple distillation and heated on an oil bath. This resulted in a very evident color change from pale pink to red. When it reached 60 degrees, carbon dioxide started to form. When you have a reaction that produces CO2, there is always a chance for the mixture to start foaming over and ruin your experiment. That's why during the whole time I never lost the reaction from my side and raised the temperature very slowly. Above 80 degrees the reaction was very noticeable and some of the vapors reached the condenser and ended up in the receiver. The distilled liquid was very milky which indicated it was containing nitromethane. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How the hell he turned chloroacetic acid into nitromethane? Well, as I said earlier, the first step is to substitute the chlorine atom with a nitro group from the sodium nitrite. This results in nitroacetic acid which is kind of unique. When you have electron withdrawing substituent on alpha position to the carboxyl group, it makes the acid thermally sensitive. The closest example is the malonic synthesis in which the substituted malonic ester decarboxylates immediately once it's hydrolyzed. In our case, the nitro group is even stronger electron withdrawing substituent and the nitroacetic acid easily decarboxylates yielding nitromethane. During the reaction, the mixture became darker and darker until it nearly turned black. As you can see, I have two thermocouples attached to the apparatus. The lower one measured the temperature of the reaction mixture and the upper one measured the temperature in the distill head. This is not mandatory, but I did it to achieve more precision and prevent the reaction from foaming over. When about 50 ml had distilled, a very clear layer separation took place in the receiver. The lower, milky layer was the nitromethane and the upper, clear layer was water. Not an easy task when carrying out this reaction is to determine when it's done. One way is to remove the heating and watch if carbon dioxide continues to form. If that's the case, the heating should be continued. An even better way was to put a hose at the end of the apparatus and insert its edge in a beaker of water. If any carbon dioxide is formed, it should bubble in the water. This is how the flask looked like when I stopped the distillation. I had to separate the nitromethane layer from the water, so I poured it in the separatory funnel. The lower layer was drained in an Erlenmeyer flask and the upper water layer was placed in a beaker. Nitromethane is slightly soluble in water, so the water layer still contains some of it that can be recovered. To do this, I added sodium chloride to it until no more dissolved. Then the solution was transferred in a round bottom flask and a distillation carried out. Soon a cloudy liquid started to distill, which again separated into two layers. When no more nitromethane came off, 
I stopped the distillation and transferred the distillate in my separatory funnel. The lower nitromethane layer was drained and the upper water layer was discarded. The combined amounts of nitromethane were again charged into the funnel. To dry them, I added about 30 ml of saturated sodium chloride solution. The funnel was capped, shaked and vented several times. Since saturated sodium chloride solution has a lot higher density than water, it is now the lower layer. I drained it and discarded it. The upper nitromethane layer was collected into 100ml Erlenmeyer flask. I added some anhydrous sodium sulfate to it to dry it completely. After about 30 minutes, I filtered it through a filter paper. A simple distillation was arranged and the flask heated on an oil bath. Everything that came below 95 degrees Celsius was discarded. When I reached that temperature, I changed the flask and started collecting my product. Almost all of it came between 96 and 99 degrees Celsius. And here is my final yield of 20 grams pure nitromethane. This corresponds to a percent yield of 31, which honestly is quite low. However, the paper I was following suggested a yield of 42%, so it is probably the reaction not being very efficient. Now comes the fun part where I had to test its burning properties. Here I placed a few milliliters of the compound in a steel cap and set it on fire. Honestly, it doesn't immediately catch on fire like ethanol or other solvent. However, once it happens, it burns with a very strange ghost cover flame. Let me turn off the lights. I must say that my camera changed the flame color a bit. In reality, it looks more like this. Amazingly, when I put the nitromethane in my car's reservoir, it became lightning fast. This is how it looked before the nitro and this is after. You see how I multiplied my horsepower? Oh, and remember that Ferrari you saw on the first picture? That's actually my neighbors. Good luck catching me when I'm on nitro neighbor. Ok, I hope you like my little story and if that's the case be sure to hit the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do it now because in my next video I will show you how I built a nuclear reactor to power my Tesla. On the side note, I also want to announce that I finally configured my Patreon account. If you like to support me and help me make better videos with even more exotic chemicals, this is how you can do it. Go to my Patreon page by clicking the link down in the description. Then choose how much you'd like to donate and join the Patreon community. As a sign of gratitude, I will show your name in the end of my videos and you will also have earlier access to them 
before they became public. I've set some goals as well. For example, when I complete the first one, I will start the synthesis of this guy. 